podcast. All right, welcome. Uh, the, my name is Leo, current president of the Solano Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Today, today we have as a host the Fairfield Sassoon Sewer District and a couple of their staff members. Uh, just uh, as uh, uh, for the audience, if you don't know, the Solano Hispanic Chamber's mission is to uh, advocate and in, in, uh, in, uh, promote the enhancement or advancement of uh, Solano Hispanic businesses within our county. Um, and visit us at solanohcc.com to uh, uh, make sure you can you don't miss on any resources or future events that may be coming up. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we have James and Talion with the Fairfield Sassoon Sewer District. Um, I want to start with um, uh, doing brief introduction. Tell us a little bit about your role within the organizations. Uh, James, I hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm James Russellfield. I'm the Director of Administrative Services here at the, the Sewer District. I've been here close to a year and a half now. So in my role, I oversee uh, finance, HR, and uh, IT, um, as well as some office administration. So um, I was kind of the main point of contact for our, our cost of service and rate study and working with the consultant and helping to, to gather all the data for for the consultant to, to analyze and put together our, our report. Thank you, and Talion? Yeah, hi, my name is Talion Sorter and I'm the uh, general manager for the Fairfield Citizen Sewer District. Uh, I've been with the Sewer District, I actually started as an intern in 1992. Uh, so uh, what is that, almost 30 years, I guess. Uh, in that time, mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of done everything. I, I started as, off as an engineer, did a lot of, um, uh, construction, um, and then uh, I've kind of worked in almost every as uh, aspect of the organization over the years, including operations and maintenance and uh, all, all the pieces finance a little bit as well. Uh, so uh, my background is engineering and then I actually have an MBA as well. So the, the business side of it. Thank you, Tally, and thank you for sharing. I uh, see that we have um, uh... Um, Vice Mayor of the City of Sassoon. We're just doing some introductions, Alma, and I'm recording this um, to provide to our audience. That, um, and just being mindful, I was saying, I, I won't be mindful of uh, who I let him in uh, because I didn't add the password feature. Um, we definitely don't want malicious people trying to join in. Um, so, thank you. I, I was just uh, trying to find the article where I can. That it were the uh, that had the the announcement sent out within the before we get started. Do you know where I can find that? If I go to the home page, where I should navigate to see more about the proposed notice. Oh, oh I think yeah. I see it. If you're on the if you're on our home page, there's a. Um, let me pull that up really quick. I see it. It says information okay. on proposed rate. Okay, so when I go to the home page, I'll notice inform a proposed rate increase. Okay. Right. And then there's a page dedicated just to kind of all the information about the rate increase. Right. Mm -hmm. So so let's get started then. I, I think you have a presentation uh, ready. So let, let's go with your presentation. See how, uh, what, what is included. And I may have a, a, a follow-up questions from there. Sure. Yeah. And feel free, you. you know, to ask questions along the way. James will kind of bring up the presentation if he can share his screen, I guess. Um, that way I can see what everybody else sees. I know sometimes when you do the presentation and oh, yes, you, that's right. you can't quite see everything. Right. Let me, let me make a co-host, uh, James. Yeah, thanks. I was going to say it didn't quite let me do that step yet. There we go. Perfect. This, this is kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly short uh, so that it doesn't um, leave plenty of room for questions. Um, but we thought it might be helpful just to kind of frame it a little bit. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, James, uh, this is we. Some of these slides are from we did a pretty extensive. I think it was probably over an hour long presentation to our board in January, um, and so this is some of the information. But I tried to 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 pull out maybe what might be most interested to your members. Um, so we'll just give a little background and then jump into the rate study. You can go to the next slide, James. Mm -hmm. So many mo most people don't actually know who we are. Um, you know, most people don't think about sewer. So uh, the the Fairfield Citizen Sewer District was actually has, has been around since 1951, um, and our board of directors is made up of some uh, council members from both Sassoon and Fairfield, 
all five from Sassoon and then five out of the five of the seven from uh, Fairfield. And uh, we're, we're what's known as a special district. So our, we focus solely on uh, treatment collection and disposal of sewage. We help the cities a little bit with some stormwater things, um, but we're a you know a special purpose district so that we can stay focused on our core mission. Um, we don't do anything else. Uh, next slide. And then our service area. I know you 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 I'm sure have members from all over the county, but our service area is just within the cities of Fairfield and Sassoon City. Uh, we treat a little bit of uh, sewage from uh, part of the county out in Sassoon Valley. Um, uh, but just uh, it's an older part of the system. Um, but about 146,000 people, um, we do uh, take care of large uh, pipelines in the ground that's kind of 12 to 48 inch. We got 70 miles of that. Um, our main focus is out at the treatment plant, which if you look at the uh, kind of center where he's showing his cursor, that's where the treatment plant's located. Out, If you're familiar with where Anheuser-Busch is along I-80, we're, we're kind of out next to the marsh out there. Um, and we've got uh, a large, over um, about 150 acres uh, that we take up with our treatment plant out there. Um, we can treat up to 23.7 million gallons a day, which is a lot, uh, probably not meaningful to most people, but uh, is quite a bit. And we do that with 61 employees. Um, and just to give you an idea, our, our kind of our annual operating capital budget, it varies year to year depending on what projects we have going on. But as, as that slide shows in 21, 22, it was almost $40 million. So it gives you kind of a sense of size and uh, uh, what our budget is. Next slide. So some of, some of what might be helpful is uh, Part of the reason for this rate study at, at this time is we do them every five years, but this rate study included something new. And that was, um, we're trying to become better stewards of the, um, of the physical kind of pipes in the ground. Uh, we've always uh, taken care of any problems we found, but we know long-term those pipes are aging and will need to be replaced. It will be very expensive. And so there was a large uh, asset management plan uh, that, that took place over the last year. And part of what this new rate does is it funds almost $6 million a year to go to replace the sewers uh, that are out in front of everybody's house, in front of all the businesses so that um, they don't fail. Because um, as, as you can imagine, especially for a business, if the sewer, and this, this happened at uh, the mall uh, not too long ago, Swano Mall, uh, there was a pipe that collapsed um, and the city of Fairfield had to, uh, some of the businesses actually had to actually close for a little while until that pipe could be repaired, I believe. So you can certainly imagine if you had a restaurant or something and that pipe, um, there was a problem with the pipe in the ground in front of that restaurant, they would not be able to operate. They'd have to close until that was fixed. And so we try to be trying to be much more proactive and make sure that doesn't happen and, and impact any businesses or residences for that matter. Um, we also try to be very proactive and make sure the capacity is out there. And so the second project you see on there, the Peabody's Walter Relief Sewer is a, a, putting in a larger sewer out in the kind of the North uh, East Fairfield uh, where there's a lot of growth going on right now. And a couple other projects you see on there are really just to show kind of the, the magnitude of some of the projects we do, you know, $12 million, uh, $20 million, uh, for some of these projects. The, a lot of things we do are very large, expensive infrastructure projects. So next slide. So in particular, you wanted us to come talk about the rates and how that works. And so it, it's very, um, under in California, it's, it's all governed by what's called Prop 218. And so it sets how we can set sewer rates. And to simplify it, uh, I think, you know, what it, it basically what the law says is we can only collect as much money as we need to provide the service. We don't, there's no profit, there's, there's none of those kinds of things that go on. And it has to be, you know, what that individual's impact is to the sewer system is what we can charge them. We can't charge them more, we can't subsidize one, we can't, you know, for example, subsidize businesses by raising residential rates or vice versa. We also can't actually, we get questioned a lot about having like low income rates or senior citizen rates. We actually are not allowed to do any of those by law. Um, our rates have to be what the impact is on the sewer system. Um, and so it's pretty prescriptive. Um, and to do that, we basically calculate how much it's gonna cost to provide the service. 
and then divide that appropriately amongst the customers. Uh, and then uh, under this Prop 218, we, we do that study and then the board looks at that, agrees or disagrees. And then uh, the notice goes out to every property owner in the, the sewer district. And I think, you know, you, you've got one of those probably and saw that as well as every residence, every, everybody that owns a piece of property in, in our service area got that notice. And, and the point of that is to make sure everybody knows uh, what's going on with the rates. So next slide, James. I, I won't spend too much time on this, but part of what we really try to do is have good long-term um, financial policies. And part of that is having a reserve policy so that rates don't go up you know, all of, all of a sudden something breaks and we have to raise rates to, to increase uh, revenue to be able to cover that. We try to look long-term. Our budget is a 10-year budget. We actually look out even farther than that. And you'll see a, a slide in a minute that helps illustrate that. Um, but we also, you know, the first reserve on there is this operating reserve so that if revenues don't come in as we expect, we can still operate everything appropriately. Um, this major maintenance reserve at the bottom is very important so that we are replacing the infrastructure as necessary. Next slide, James. So this is a very busy slide. I'm not going to go into too much detail unless you have more questions at some point. But kind of the point of this is at the top, it's just kind of showing how much we'll be spending each year. And so if you look at kind of the top of those blue bars, you can see we're spending you know, between 40 and $50 million over the next few years, which is a lot of money, more, more money than we have revenue coming in. And that's a plan thing. If you look at the bottom, it should, there's a red line that shows what our um, uh, reserve balance is. And so we've been building up reserves to almost around $60 million in the bank at this point. And we're gonna be spending down those reserves over the next few years because of all these large expensive projects that have been planned for. And, you know, part of what I think what's important to, to your members probably is, you know, while we understand that, it, you know, any rate increase can be difficult, uh, as you see at the bottom, our, our, the, the rate increases that we've proposed over the next few years is an average of 5%. Um, and we're only able to do that because we did build up those reserves. Uh, if we wouldn't have done that, we would have had to raise, you know, 40 to $50 million a year. And so we're spending down, you know, half of that reserve over the next, you know, five year period to, to help stabilize and keep those rates at a reasonable level. And that's something we've strived to do in the, the entire history of the organization. And you can see we, you know, we, while our, this rate increase is only uh, under Prop 218, you do it for a five year period. You know, our projections are that we'll be able to maintain uh, the rates at around a 4% increase per year over the next even 10 year period. Um, and so while that does have an impact, uh, we hope that that's a manageable impact for our customers. If you wanna to go to the next slide. Um, and so again, I, I won't dwell too much on this. Uh, there were some changes in this study where we're adding a fixed account charge uh, that maybe some of the customers haven't seen before just to kind of cover with you know, fixed costs that everybody needs to cover. Um, Flows have decreased from residential. Um, you know, at one time we looked at, we've been studying this for almost for 10 years really. Um, and there was a question about, was that just because of a drought or something? But we've seen de decreased flows from residences over sustained over time. And so there has been a little bit of a shift from the cost allocation from residents to more commercial customers. Um, also in that last bullet is we were segregating out the local collection versus the larger pipes because you know, the costs that we're adding are um, to replace a lot of those smaller pipes have increased it. So basically just the people that are getting used to those smaller pipes are, are covering that cost. Next slide, James. So this is kind of the you know, existing rates versus the proposed 22, 23 rates. And over on the right side, it's got some um, percent changes. And so one thing that is, I think, maybe confusing to some people if they start doing the math on the rates, and this is only for the first year, the rates, because they had to be equalized a little bit between different classes. Um, so for example, I got to move my, my pictures out of the way here. The, uh, 
the residential rate is in the first year is only going up by 3.9 percent but next the 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 two years after that will be five percent as it will all, all of these numbers on the right side in blue are only for the first year each year after that um, they will be the five percent or the four percent increases indicated um, and so you know, for you, probably for more of your members as business owners, they're probably more in that commercial category of either regular strength and think of regular strength as offices, retail, and high strength as restaurants to simplify it. And so you can see there's a difference in that kind of office retail regular strength. It's a 4% in the first year and the restaurants is 10%. And that's kind of some of that shift in less water usage is making that higher, what we call higher strength ways to think of food and things like that and the water that we have to remove um, as being that impact. So again, a restaurant might see a 10 or almost 11% increase in 22, 23, but in the next year, it will only be 5%. So hopefully that makes some sense. James, you wanna go to the next slide? And this is just the rate schedule that uh, everybody saw that got that notice uh, in, in the service area. So everybody got a notice showing these numbers. And again, at the top, it's, you know, it's calling out the 5% uh, in, for the first three years and then 4% in the, the last two years of the five-year period. Can we go to the next slide? So we thought it might be helpful to put it in perspective. And so, you know, these numbers might, you know, not mean a lot until you kind of know, you know, what are your neighbors paying? And so uh, we've got these charts um, and kind of the standard benchmark we use is what a, a home pays. And so this shows that our rates are currently the lowest in the, in the region and will continue to be the lowest, even after that one year increase. Um, you know, all those other rates you see in the other cities around the area are what their current rates are. They all have rate increases. Um, but probably more importantly, if you want to go to the next slide, James, from, from a business standpoint, um, again, this low strength waste, think of retail offices, things like that. Um, we're the lowest in any of the cities around. So I'm, I was kind of hope, I, I'm, I am hoping that some of your members maybe in Vacaville or Benicia or other parts of the county will see this and go, wow, we should move to Fairfield or Sassoon because they've got the cheapest rates around. And if you go to the next slide, James, uh, gotta, I gotta, gotta get a little marketing in, Leo. The, uh, the same is true of a restaurant. So while I can imagine, you know, I know a lot of people operate on very low margins and, you know, your sewer bill may seem a lot, um, but we've strived very hard to be as efficient as we can um, with the money. And, you know, I think our rates reflect that, that, you know, we really are the lowest in the region. So if you were operating that same business in, uh, you know, Vacaville or Benicia, you'd be paying two or three times more for your sewer service if you had a restaurant in those areas. I think that might be, is that the last slide, James? Yeah, that's the okay. last, last okay. one. Okay, so I know I, I kind of ran through that pretty quick, but I didn't want to bore people too much uh, <laughs> with, with uh, too many details. No, thank you. Um, there are some, some things I was taking away from from some of the stuff that you were saying um, that and, and jotting down some notes. By the way, uh, uh, one of our board members is Ella Martinez, who is from Vacaville. So oh, <laughs> maybe you can sell her on the, uh, on the experience. We, we, um, would, we would welcome her to Fairfield or Sassoon City. <laughs> One thing I wanted, uh, I'm still not clear, is how the billing is done to uh, the properties. Because I attended something similar to the city of Vallejo, where it's going to uh, propose for to go to a bottom rate increase for okay. sewers. Uh, I, I understood that one is done through the parcel taxes or property taxes. How is it done over here? Sure. Yeah. So each area, there's different ways of doing it. Some bill on a parcel tax. Uh, we do not. We bill on the city water bills. And so okay. on your city of Fairfield or city of Sassoon city water bill, it's good. part of the bill is for water and part of it is for sewer. Um, so for the residential rates, those are a flat rate. So it's just one number. Your If it's a business, um, then you're probably your sewer rate does vary or your sewer cost 
varies by how much water you use. Got so it. It's, it's using that water uh, meter to determine how much water is incoming to the business. So, so that means that uh, even if you lease in, right? Obviously, most most of the time, the the person that is leasing a property, commercial property, is actually the one that has to pay the other bills, uh, electricity. Uh, that's what typically see right in a lease agreement. So that means this affects pretty much anybody that is on the lease. You don't actually have to own the property, if, even if sure. you rent, even if you rent, right? And you have to pay the water bill. Right. Okay. Oh. I think one one thing to to add onto that, I think while we're looking at, we've got this high strength slide up and we had the low strength slide up is um, this comparison because it's based on water usage assumes that the, the commercial resident used 40, 100 cubic feet of water use. Because if, if you go and try to look at a direct comparison between different agencies, just looking at the rate itself, the fixed charge um, and how it's calculated for some of the, the agencies varies. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind too, is, is having that to be able to do the comparison and re, you kind of have to recalculate, um, a bill based on your water usage, um, instead of just looking directly at the rate itself. Cause there can be little, there there's differences between the agencies on how that's, that's put together. Right. And, and so that brings, uh, 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 well, a couple of questions that I have based on that one is, um, you mentioned that because uh, it doesn't have to go to a ballot, this is a proposed rate increase and, and it, it just gets added. It just has to be a notification. However, what's that difference with, um, for example, the, 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 um, the one in the uh, Vallejo, there's a proposed stormwater rate increase that's going to the ballot. Not sure if it has something to do similar. Over there is the uh, flood and wastewater district, right? That handles that. Right. Uh, but you mentioned that there was a specific uh, bill where that didn't need to. So how is that different that over here, you don't need to go on the ballot, but over there it is. Sure. So the, the difference is uh, that's on stormwater. And so the, the, the rates we're talking about here are only for sewer, sanitary sewer. Uh, these rates are not used for stormwater purposes. There's a whole, we have a whole separate rate structure for stormwater. Um, and so this has nothing to do with stormwater. The one in Vallejo is solely for stormwater and stormwater and sewer have different roles. And so in the case with Vallejo, because it's stormwater, it, it requires a ballot and a vote. Um, sewer does not require that. It has what's more well known as a protest mechanism. And so um, in this case for sewer, um, and if Vallejo was raising sewer rates, they, they would do exactly the same process we're doing here, where you give a notice and people have the opportunity to protest, you know, basically mail in a protest letter. Um, but there's no ballot associated with uh, sewer, whether that's Vallejo or here or, or anywhere else in the state of California, for that matter. Yeah, so the, the difference between the two is stormwater versus sanitary sewer. And going into that protest aspect of it tell us more uh, about that because I, I it when i was looking at it it seems a little bit um complicated i may scare some businesses that may have a language barrier and um obviously anything that has to do with government will affect any um you know immigrants and immigrants businesses sure. uh, so tell us more about that process yeah, so the way the, the law uh, is set up is that the property owner has the right to protest it. So as you mentioned, you know, we, so we mail the notices to the property owners, but as you mentioned, sometimes it could be a renter that's paying the water bill. Um, and so, um, you know, that it, it would obviously depend on the lease agreement, who pays which bills and all those kinds of things. But in, uh, under Proposition 218, this is considered a property related cost and so that's why we know we notify the property owner and that it is and it's the property owner that you know can, can do that protest um james is the one as he as he mentioned is managing that so i don't james did you want to add anything to that am i am i missing anything no i think that's um that's a good good recap i think if the if the property owner does pass that that notice to someone who's leasing the property or renting, um, they can protest as well, but only one can be counted for the parcel. It has to be tied to the, the property. So 
that's why the um, the law and the procedures start with the the property owner when we we send those notices out, um, and we're required to get that information from the the county's latest assessment rule to get the the most current addresses um, and contacts for those parcel owners. Yeah, and the the way maybe to to, to kind of circle uh, back on how that works, and so what the law requires is if more than half of the property owners mail in that pro mail in a protest then the rate cannot go into effect and so in our case that's uh what's the number james 35,000 yeah a little property. over 35,000 parcels received received a notice so more than half of those would have to mail in that protest uh for the the board of directors to not uh be not able to adopt the rate so it's and quite a, it's, it's a very large number and just to, to add on, the, the protest itself um, really only requires three components and it just has to have, um, and it's it's required by Prop 13, these requirements, which can seem a little, I acknowledge they can seem a little outdated with you know email um, and electronic communication, but it just needs a original signature um, from the property order, owner or the tenant um, Who's, who's responsible for the bill. I mean, it has to identify the parcel either by address or uh, the parcel number. Um, and then it just simply has to say they oppose the, um, the rate increase. They, there doesn't have to be a, you know, a long letter of reason why. Um, it just has to say that I oppose and have that signature. Um, so although there's a, lot of, there's a lot of complications, I think within uh, Prop 13, um, I think going back the, the intent of that that law way back when was to to make it easy to submit a, a protest uh, with those those few criteria. And if I may just add um, as a quick follow up to your question, Leo, um, a couple of things that the sewer district and the board uh, also agreed on was to make the information accessible in other in the other two predominant languages and preferable to soon English and, and Tagalog. So if there, when you mention a language barrier, if one of our one of the business owners or even residents has questions about those, that can be accessed through the website and or or can contact someone to get more information. And the other follow up to uh, to something you mentioned, um, as you you heard, um, it's just a matter of signing a protest and submitting that in. So it doesn't. Um, I know we work with a lot of small businesses, business owners who use an I-10 number to run their business. So it's completely separate from that. So that doesn't play a role in any way if they had any, any concerns about, about it as well. So that it's completely separate and wouldn't um, affect them in any way. I just wanted to add that as well. Yeah, we don't ask for you know a business ID number or anything that really actually identifies the business name. It's, it's more about the property. Um, mm -hmm who has control of the property. Yeah, I well, even myself, as I read through the um, through the notifications, I just now realized, oh, the process is something that, uh, for example, I have to sign. And if I understood correctly, if if more than half of uh, our property owners with the Fairfax soon uh, mail that protest posting, for example, then the board probably wouldn't say, I see it. <laughs> these conversations like this is actually that probably will help a lot of other people sending the notifications, even if it's in, uh, 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 you know, in the different languages is still not, not enough, right? Because even me, myself, I read through it. I even did a, a little bit of presentations and I just now realize, oh, okay, that's, that's actually what needs to happen in how it works. Um, and I consider myself, right, somebody that can, uh, read English and understand it. Um, so, yeah, thank you for for pointing that out. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I see it over here. I put out the notice. It says it says be in writing with an original signature from the property owner, record tenants. Uh, I don't see a form that needs to fill out. So I'm imagining it's like a letter that I can just make myself that includes all this stuff that you that that is being asked as this parcel number, mm -hmm. uh, signature. Uh, received by the district uh, before close of the public hearing that will begin 6 p.m. March 28th. So not very long time, not a lot of time that we have left. And maybe directly, maybe may mailed directly to the director of administration services. And there's an address there, at Chadbourne Road. And we do have a, 
mailbox out front as well. If I, I believe some people just drive by and, and put it in the mailbox if there's a concern about um, the time remaining or, or anything like that. Um, that's an option as well. That's at that address, the 1010 Chadburn Road. That's mm -hmm. where the mailbox is, drop off. Yeah. Okay. That's at the wastewater treatment plant out, uh, as I mentioned, kind of south of Anheuser Busch area. Okay. Um, so that's great. Any any updates on uh, how the hearing is going to happen? I haven't seen any updates on if it decided to do a virtual Zoom or work location. Yeah, yeah, so we, we did make the decision this week in conjunction with uh, uh, what we call our executive committee or four of the board members, and they've decided they feel comfortable having it in person, so it will be an in-person meeting. Yeah, but but where? At, at that address, 10, 10 Chadbourne. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, it will be updated on the website, uh, both the, the whole agenda for that meeting uh, usually gets posted Friday afternoon. So I think that's why we, in the notice, we said it would be determined by that date, you know, whether it be in person or virtual. There will still be a virtual option if somebody doesn't feel comfortable coming to the meeting, we understand that. Um, so there will still be a Zoom uh, option for the public to attend, but the board members themselves will be uh, attending in person for the most part. Thank you. And for those that um, are interested in seeking advice on what the rate increase is going to look like, let's say, for example, business, right, uh, that is paying for the water bill, um, are, are there any resources within the district that can help uh, with that? So we, we, we would always be happy to talk to anyone if they have more questions or more, you know, how it works. I guess it, it kind of depends on uh, what, what the question is, if it's more specifically about how they pay their bills or something like that, because the cities do the billing for us. Um, you can always start with us and then we can uh, hopefully direct you to whether if we can't answer the question, we can direct you to who can. Okay. And I was more like uh, in the, uh, referring to if there's, for example, somebody that wants to understand, oh, you know, um, I have this business, I have this um, based on the wastewater or the water that is used. Uh, do you have, uh, I, I, will you be able to estimate what, what range I'm going to fall on there or what price, uh, uh, you know, sure. cost of structure or rate mm -hmm. structure I'm going to fall on there? Oh, sure. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that will be typically the, the number in, on the website. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. there's 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 also a way to send an email that way too, if if that's easier for people. Okay, so yeah, on, on your website, see a contact page. Let's see a uh, May nine of seven zero seven four two nine a nine three zero. There's emergency lines. Um, I see a customer service request form, and I see an email contact us at fssd.com. Right. Yep. Oh, that, oh, that's for employment verification the the contact us is um still monitored by our our office administration staff though they're they're frequently checking that for general inquiries as well got it um Alma, uh, Isabel, i know this is out of your your area but if you have any questions if you have any customers that are in in the area um anything you want to say or add or questions? Uh, no, I just kind of wanted to know what it was all about. I do have a lot of family in Fairfield and Sassoon. And so they were kind of asking like, oh, you know, so just let me know what's going on. A lot right. of people, at least who I hang out with and stuff, um, there was inquiries or just a little bit of like, um, they weren't really sure what was going on or how it was going to go about getting the information out to the general public. So I just wanted to be informed so I have some kind of source of information for them, if need be. And if I'm ever asked at one of our mixers, I don't want to be left in limbo, not knowing how to reply or where to send them to. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, and I think for me, um, for us as a chamber, education has been key to just helping people understand the why something is happening. I think when people understand the reasons for why a rate needs to change or how often a study happens or what that means to for them to project their operational costs over time, is it can start thinking, and, and I'm really talking about our small businesses, our regular mom and pop shops that often do their own accounting or maybe mm -hmm. consult with someone once a year or something like that. For them, it's really who I know that um, often needs the most support in just understanding what does this mean? What does this mean to me? And what do I have to plan for? Um, and I think this presentation did a really, really great job of covering all of it in regards to this is what a water rate means, this or sewer rate means, and this is what needs to increase over time. These are the benefits back to the community, which were mentioned about our infrastructure, capital investment, that's all to keep us and ensure that, you know, all of that continues to be steady. Um, I heard, you know, one of the things that was mentioned is in order to help our, um, keep our rates stabilized, this is one of the methods to be able to do so. And most importantly, transparency. And I think that was mentioned around Prop 218, which is here's the information so everyone knows. If you don't agree, here's a method that is part of the process for you to object. And it's really us just to support people in, in helping them stay educated about what all of this means. And then the a public hearing date on the 28th. So I think that covers, at least for me, why I thought this was important. It's really talking to our mom and pop shops our small business owners and supporting them in understanding what all of this meant. Right. We, we, we take, you know, the, you know, as, as all, almost one of our board members as well. And so she knows, you know, we take the, you know, very seriously the uh, duty we have to provide sewer service. And, you know, it's one of those things that most people don't think about. And to a certain extent, that's, that's good. If they, if they don't have to think about it, it means they're not having a problem with it. Um, and I, I've worked in uh, other countries where you don't have, you know, the, the thought that you would turn on a tap and water would come out doesn't cross your mind um, because it's not there. Uh, and so, you know, we're very fortunate in our community. We have very robust water and sewer systems. And so, you know, I, I ask people, when was the last time you turned on your water tap and water didn't come out? Or the last time, you know, your sewer backed up? And, and it does happen, you know, things do break, but I think that's why we feel it's very important to invest in that infrastructure long-term because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the fastest way to close a, a restaurant or a business is if if the sewer backs up or the water, if they don't have water, um, you know, just because of health standards and things, that generally means the business has to close. And that's, you know, even one or two days could be significant lost revenue. So we do everything we can to, to really not, um, to a certain extent, not have people know who we are because the service is just there for them. And I will say I did work in another county where uh, our next door neighbors who were in a block were a couple of restaurants and there was a sewer issue and it was everyone had to leave the building and it was about a week's worth of work uh, in closure to the restaurants, which rely heavily on foot traffic, you know, in and out. And so I have seen when the result is an issue um, and it's uh, it's something we never want to see in, in our community. So that's a, it's a plus. Uh, the other thing I want to mention that I thought was important in regards to the two rates is the understanding of the um, regular strength and mm -hmm. high strength. And so I think that's where people, if they were reading that, wouldn't know how to categorize themselves. Sure. So I think that was very beneficial for both of you to help uh, define what that meant. And that, that was yeah, it. unfortunately, we, of, we often have to describe things in legal terms uh, and ordinances and things that, that I, I agree are not always the easiest to understand. So. Um, that's why I tried to use more terms like restaurant and uh, retail, um, even though the ordinance, the ordinance is written in, in these regular and high strength terms. They do use the words uh, retail and others and, and, you know, more defined language, but, you know, people, you know, I get people don't read the ordinance. Um, that's not typically what somebody's going to read. But if we always welcome, if somebody has questions, uh, mm -hmm. we're always happy to talk to anyone. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I echo what Alma say in terms of, you know, the learning, understanding the process, why something comes up, uh, and knowing that, that you have the opportunity to protest if you need to, at least reach out for help. 
uh, it, it helps the community understand where things are coming from. Uh, that's why it was important, yeah, for us, like I must say, right, that, um, you know, we both are in our community out there. Uh, so obviously it's important that we understand because if we get asked questions and as Ella was mentioning, right, at least we know what to direct in or if something happened, why it happened and who to direct into. Um, and for those businesses that are going to be watching this and re recording or something, um, definitely feel free to reach out to us if you don't, cannot find the Fairfax and Sewer, Sewer District Water uh, website. Um, to get the contact information, uh, but um, you know, make use of this information. Uh, it, uh, if you're paying for the bill, um, uh, at least ask yourself how this is going to impact me. Who do I need, need to reach out to to learn more, um, or, or and when you're going to reach out? So, so do that action. All right, thank you, uh, James Talon Talion, for your time today. Uh, Alma Isela, I appreciate you both being here. Any last closing remarks? No, just anyway. thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. As, as I mentioned, a lot of people have no idea who we are and we, we, mm -hmm. we take great pride in what we do. And, uh, you know, we feel like we, we provide a really critical service to the community. And uh, so the more we, I actually appreciate the more people that know what we do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.